How much power does it actually take to run a bunch of different home theater gear for movies and games and other things? So on the channel here, I recently updated my tour videos for both of my home theater spaces, my dedicated 7.2.4 big projection screen room, and my living room, which has an 83 inch uh, LG G2 OLED and a 2.2 audio setup, Kaleidoscape Apple TV, Anthem processors, Parasound amps, PlayStation gaming PC, all of that kind of stuff. And in my tours, one of the things I noted, particularly in my rack tour, was I have a CyberPower 1500 watt UPS that runs my entire rack. So there's a lot of gear on this rack, again, driving basically both of those rooms. And one of the other things I did in my setup is the television itself and the things that are plugged in in the living room, their power actually routes from the outlet down and plugs into this same system. So it's all on the same circuit. It's all on the same power delivery. The only things amongst all my theater spaces that are not on this circuit are the subwoofers in the adjacent dedicated theater room and the projector itself. Running off of the UPS then is literally everything else in my system, including that LG TV, the sources and audio processing, the Parasound amplifiers that I do run uh, for the Focal in-wall speakers in the theater and the two IW LCR6s in the living room are not on the UPS. It's really not a great idea to run power-hungry big amps on something like that. But everything else is. And so one of the pieces of, uh, one of the lines of questions that had come in through the comments in that was about the UPS and, and is it big enough? How did you size it? What's the actual power draw of the system depending on what you're doing? So I wanted to make this video for you folks and for myself too, because I'm actually really curious. I've never done this, this level of measurement in experimentation uh, for myself. I basically bought the biggest UPS that I could get before the NEMA plug types really changed to the super high amperage different types of connectors. So the 1500 watt in a line conditioner in a UPS is about the largest that you can get that has just a regular, you know, US, American, whatever style plug on it. And so I do have a dedicated 20 amp circuit feeding all of this uh, in here in a separate 20 amp circuit feeding the theater room itself. So the UPS is plugged into that 20 amp circuit. And what we're gonna do is, is take a look at the, the, the power reading, the wattage reading on the UPS across a variety of different things turned on and different usage uh, of particularly the living room. So it's gonna include the operation of the LG G2. We're gonna show playing movies on Apple TV, playing movies on Kaleidoscape, the gaming PC, and the PlayStation. And we'll see, are we actually overtaxing this UPS, how much how much power headroom is there to spare? All right, so here we are, test number one. Not really a whole lot of stuff on. This is kind of just the dormant, I would say passive power state of the general system. The PC is asleep, the PlayStation is asleep. I do have my uh, eight bay Synology NAS, the DS1821, with four occupied drives. That is running, the Control 4, elements are running the ea5 controller and the the matrix uh, audio switch for our house audio zones and the amplifier they're on no music is playing so there's no uh, just just whatever the passive kind of power draw is right there we can see the apple tvs and such are off they're asleep kaleidoscape this is the terra server 12 terabyte hard drive in there it's on it's kind of like always on because that's the connection the online connection if you uh, access the system or push to download that device is ready to go but the strato is asleep the anthem str preamplifier that runs the 2.2 audio in the living room is asleep the rack amps the triad rack amps for my subwoofers are asleep the avm 70 is asleep the other amplifiers are off and upstairs in the living room the tv is off the switch is off and the apple tv is asleep and so as we can see we've got a power draw of about 170 watts passive here 15 percent of the capacity of the ups 170 watts and there's an amperage and a va rating there but the 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 consumed wattage the instantaneous wattage use is what we're what we're interested to kind of get an idea for all right so here's test number two playing a movie on the apple tv i'm streaming aquaman from itunes movies so now we have the lg g2 on 
in HDR mode, Dolby Vision mode, we have the Anthem STR on. We have the sub amplifiers on, which are running off of the UPS. I know I commented that we don't want to generally run the Parasounds off of the UPS, but I do have these kind of smaller wattage Class Ds running the, rub, running the subs uh, still through the UPS, although I may be changing that in the near future. We'll talk about that soon. But so Apple TV on, streaming, t television, all of that. And as you can see, there's a lot of fluctuation in here, but we're kind of hitting between, say, 350 and maybe about a peak of 450 or so watts. More than a doubling, I guess, of the standby of all of those same pieces of electronics. But even still, at nominally 400 watts, we're way, way, way below the 1500, uh, say, rated watt maximum of power support that this UPS is rated for. So running a full-blown TV and some sub-amps and uh, a processor and all of that, no problem at all. Tons of headroom. I should comment as well that while that was, while that was running, basically while that wattage B-roll there was being collected, I did fluctuate the volume a good bit. I was down to about minus 30. In the living room, we're usually about here for comfortable listening, minus 45 for TV shows, news, and that sort of thing. So getting this thing down to minus 30 is getting pretty loud up there. Standing down in the basement, a room removed from where that, that space was, I could hear the scene. I, I, I did the scene where Aquaman and Mira uh, were fighting uh, in the town, and I, I could hear the punches, the booms, the slams, and, and all of that coming through the, through the floor and through the walls. So the volume was pretty good, and that was still the wattage uh, being drawn to deliver that level of impact and exercising the subwoofers and, and all of that. All right, next test, same movie. We're gonna play Aquaman, but this time I'm gonna play it from the Kaleidoscape. Same scene, the Aquaman Mira Atlantis fight in Sicily. Started it up, came down here, took a little measure of what was going on. And interestingly, a bit more power, a bit more power out of the Kaleidoscape. But more stuff is happening in my system now than was happening before. We're still running the LG uh, in HDR mode. Now though, we have the AVM70 turned on, the zone two, uh, portion of the AVM70 turned on <clears throat> because I have the Kaleidoscape going through that and then the Zone 2 out to the living room. I did the same kinds of volumes here. I cranked it up to about minus 30, which is a little bit louder than off of the Apple TV. Getting to minus 30 gets louder, I think, on the Kaleidoscape than streaming from iTunes relationally. Still had the sub amps turned on. Now the Strato is turned on. Now the hard drive in the Terra is actually spinning actively to send the data to the strato to play to the tv a few more things going on and as we can see the power consumption is going up a bit pretty much i would say nominally in the low 500s watching it for about a minute i think it peaked up there around 590 so a, a good bit more uh, than playing from the apple tv but still we're not even at half we're not even at half capacity not even halfway to the 1500 watts that the ups is is rated to provide. And when I did stop playback on the Kaleidoscape, we immediately dropped back down to about 350. And we're sitting there pretty, pretty level. So that's, that's TV on at a static menu, more devices on but not really doing anything, no sound being sent through the, the speakers and the audio system at the moment. Brought us up from 170 to 350 and playback. There you go. Playback on Kaleidoscape burns a little more power. All right, next test, PlayStation 5 Digital Edition running Spider-Man Remastered. Uh, basically just had my son kind of web-slinging around the city, running in the 60 FPS performance ray trace mode. So as you can see, a little more power still, more power over the Kaleidoscape. I would have expected that. The PlayStation should be sucking more wattage to, to render a game with all of its CPU and GPU power versus the, the playback power required for these two things to do something. I didn't really crank it up as loud, but we're getting now close here to 50% capacity. I don't think there were really any 700s in there, but getting close, upper 600s, nominally speaking, in the low to mid 600, 600 watt range. So again, that's the LG G2 still running in HDR mode because the game, of course, is in HDR. We got all the stuff turned on here. The PlayStation is still going through, is still going through the AVM70. So that's still on in a zone two mode plus the STR and everything else. And other devices, as we're, as we're doing things, we're kind of accumulating a little more passive energy because the Kaleidoscape is still like in its kind of on but dormant mode. 
the Apple TV isn't fully asleep, so there's a little bit of an add up uh, occurring here. I will shut the PlayStation completely off when I go to the next test, and that'll also end up turning the AVM70 off as well. So console gaming doesn't add a lot. Tons of headroom still here. All right, so for the last one, again, Spider-Man Remastered running on Steam, 3090 Ti PC, Intel uh, 11, 900K CPU, water cooler, pretty beefy computer, pull some power. And as you can see, <laughs> PC, PC draws definitely over the consoles. We're hitting over 1,000 watts now. Nominally in the, in the low 1,000s, up to about 70% capacity on the UPS. Still, still quite a lot of headroom there. In, in any case, that, that's going to be the maximum of, of, of everything, of the power draw that would, would put on there. And that game is pretty much maxing, maxing the GPU out as well. I've got all the settings maxed up, ray tracing, full 4K, running VRR up near 100 FPS, um, and, and all of that. So, so what does this tell us? Well, I suppose if you're going to put your home theater gear on a UPS, you probably don't want to be looking at a 500, 600 watt you want to be up probably a minimum of a thousand watt i think still this is probably the sweet spot to go as much as you can to fill out a regular you know regular style regular power amperage circuit get the 1500 to have that headroom probably still wouldn't want to be running these parasounds on the ups i actually did it when i first got them and i plugged everything in it was natural for me to just plug everything into the UPS as I was doing before. What I found was those the amps, as everything would power on in the initial draw, the initial power suck of the amps, fill up all their capacitors and all of that hit, it would it would overload the UPS and it would beep and it would want to go into protection in, in that. So after a little bit of corroborating research, I pulled all of the big parasounds off of there. And so I think that's that's basically there where they'll remain. The interesting question will be, what does a next next gen computer look like? An Intel 13900K and a possibly 4090 Nvidia uh, card, expecting to probably be pulling more power, a few hundred watts more power than this is pulling right now, which might take this draw up to 12, 1300 watts or so, starting to get close to the 1500. At that point, maybe it would be wise to actually take the subwoofer amplifiers off the UPS and remove that load as other things start to put more load on it in terms of sources and, and all of that. But we'll see. At least the TV can comfortably run on the UPS. I think that's pretty cool. And I need to figure probably something out, something else out separately for the projector in the other room. The subwoofers are, are probably fine in the theater are probably fine just plugging into the wall. But I do have some other things in mind. I was looking at some type of a surge protector, light power conditioner to actually put the amplifiers on. And I did order a Furman that will be coming in here soon. So look for some content on that. So I'll be running, my goal essentially is to run all of the sources and all of the general equipment on the UPS, but just take the high powered amplifiers off the, off the wall connection, which is where they are right now. Uh, and into the Furman, still all on the same dedicated 20 amp circuit for the rack. So there's a couple reasons that I'm doing that. I will talk about the experience of uh, reasons why and the experience of reconnecting things uh, with the Furman and where future amplification might go uh, in a coming video. So hopefully this was helpful to you. If you're considering a UPS, let me know are, in the comments. Are you thinking about one? What do you think the right size and capacity and all that you know for you is? Are you using one with your home theater gear? What do you put on it? What don't you put on it? Share your stories. Everybody can learn, myself included. So I'm very eager to read about other folks' experiences. Otherwise, please do all the regular YouTube stuff. Like, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications. Look down in the description for some ways to support the channel. We have super thanks. There's Amazon affiliate links, channel memberships, merchandise, and other options. I am very grateful for anything that you may be willing uh, to do, contribute, in, in that regard. Thanks so much and come back for more home theater discussion and fun.